But we must also consider the best way forward for Scotland in the event that the UK does leave the European Union. And to ensure that all options remain open to us, the time to do that is now. Of course, as we do so, we must learn the lessons of the Brexit mess. Whether we like it or not, the continued lack of clarity around Brexit has implications for Scotland's decision-making, a point I will return to later. But there is surely one point of clarity that has emerged over the past three years, even for the most ardent opponent of Scottish independence. The Westminster system of government simply does not serve Scotland's interests. <laughs> There are therefore three specific steps that the Scottish Government intends to take now. Firstly, I can confirm that the Scottish Government will act to ensure that the option of giving people a choice on independence later in this term of Parliament is progressed. We will shortly introduce legislation to set the rules for any referendum that is now or in the future within the competence of the Scottish Parliament. We will aim for this legislation to be on the statute book by the end of this year. Mike Russell will set out the details next month. Uh, we do not need a transfer of power, such as a Section 30 order, to pass such a framework bill, though we would need it to put beyond doubt or challenge our ability to apply the bill to an independence referendum. Of course, as members are aware, the UK government's current position is that it will not agree to transfer power. Uh, I believe that position will prove to be unsustainable. However, by making progress with primary legislation first, we won't squander valuable time now in a standoff, in a standoff with a UK government that may soon be out of office. We will seek agreement to a transfer of power at an appropriate point during or shortly after the bill's passage on the basis that it will be exercised when this parliament and no other considers it right to offer the people of Scotland a choice.